iOS 17 is looking better each day. This is an amazing update with a ton of new features and changes. And when it comes to performance and stability, you cannot tell that this is actually on beta stages, let alone beta 3 of a such big update. It is really, really great. And in my opinion, this update is actually ready for release. Even with the public beta that Apple has released for iOS users, you can see that it is really, really good and it performs as it would be actually a public release. As I said, it has a ton of new features and we're going to talk about some of those new ones that we have discovered right away here. It is actually packed. 9to5Mac just did a video with more than 350. 50 new features on iOS 17, so that alone is really, really crazy. So let's go ahead and first of all, take a look at some of the great new features that we have been able to discover on iOS 17 Beta 3. So here we have a really cool one on the Photos app. So when you have live pictures on your camera roll, you will notice that if you tap here on the photo that is live, so if I tap on this other one, it will show like this. If I tap here and tap once more, on the photo that is live, you can see it will actually expand this and I can go ahead and pan through that live photo. How good is that? You can actually take a look at the live photo just by sliding your finger right there, just like you would do on a video. And this right here is really great. I, a lot of users have actually been requesting this feature. Taking a screenshot of a web page can now be saved as a photo image. Previously, you just had to save it actually as a PDF file. Now, when you go here and you tap the done button, you will have two options. You can still save it as a PDF to your files app, but you can also save it to your photos. And now you will get a photo image of the full web page. Here's a great new change here on the spotlight search. By the way, the spotlight search is amazing on iOS 17. You can do way more than you used to do on iOS 16. So if you search for settings, you will get the shortcut right here, something similar. It won't be the same for every device, but you will get this. And if you tap on show more, then you will get a ton of different options here, a ton of different settings that you can actually change right from the spotlight search. So if I want to turn on or off seller data, I can do that from here. The always on display as well, the focusing modes. And you can see here, we have a lot of things that we can go ahead and quickly turn on or off directly from the spotlight search. Now this right here is very, very useful and will save a ton of time. When you go to one of your books and copy a text, so let's just go ahead and copy this. If I want to paste this anywhere, I can copy it, maybe on a page or I want to paste it on a note. You can see that it will automatically cite that paragraph right here. So you can see it shows basically the author there, the title of the, of the book as well. So this is really, really useful. Now, if you want to actually format this, you can of course still do it, but it will automatically cite it for you. On the spotlight search, if you just search for a note, you will now get a new button right there. If you tap on it, it shows you this pop-up where you can go ahead and quickly create a new note and of course save it under the notes app. If you just search for a number on the spotlight search, now you will have actually the option to call that number. Now you can see you can go ahead and send a message as well and also do a FaceTime call or just add the number from there. So just simply type here the number. I can still tap the go button and still make the call without even having to reach for the buttons at all. And we got a crayon tool for the markup tools. So if we go to the markup, now we have the crayon right there. This is really, really cool, of course. Let's you do way more here. You can go ahead and just paint with crayon. This is really, really cool. Of course, you will have the option to choose any color you want from here and use with the crayon tool. And of course, set the size as well. So you will have different sizes you can pick from. On the Photos app, you know that we have that People's album where all the people that are like on your photos will show up there. Well, if someone is missing, you can go ahead and now add people. When you go to the People's album, you will see all the different people here, but now you will also have a button that allows you to add someone else. And a really crazy feature for the phone app, when you go to your phone app and you go to your recent calls, you can now have up to 2000 recent calls. That will of course include WhatsApp calls and FaceTime calls, up to 2000 will now be saved on the list. And when it comes to calls and numbers, if you're using dual SIMs on your iPhone, now you can sort messages based on each different SIM. 
Not just that, you can also have different ringtones for different SIM cards. That is a feature that has been requested for a really, really long time. Now you can do that with iOS 17. And of course, when you receive a call, you know from which SIM it is coming iOS 17, of course, is great with new features and all that, but there are problems and some of the main problems that iOS 17 had was the keyboard. It was actually a big, big problem. A lot of users had problems with keyboards on apps, but that on apps was fixed with beta 2 and beta 3 has fixed the keyboard on the, on the spotlight search and on the app library. On my experience, it is working great. I'm not having any issues with the keyboard anymore. I know this might be different for different users, but it looks like it has been fixed. Another fix is the airdrop. The airdrop is working way, way better with iOS 17 beta 3, especially with the new re-release of iOS 17 beta 3. If you didn't catch that, make sure to go ahead and check out your software update section under the settings app. We have a re-release of iOS 17 beta 3 that should make the airdrop work way way better than it used before because it was kind of glitchy with the first two betas and as i said at the beginning of the video the performance on ios 17 is actually amazing i don't think anyone would be able to tell that this is actually on beta stages and it's just beta 3 as of such a big update so you can see right here even the geekbench score is looking great way better than iOS 16. So we have here the multi-core score at 6,799, while the single core, sing, single core score is at 2,644, which is really, really great. And just on like everyday use, it's very, very smooth. No like big glitches on or reboots or random shutdowns or things like that that you would expect to see on a big update. It is actually looking really, really good. And I wouldn't even be mad if this was released to the public on today. Now, something that might not be that great, but it's still okay, is the battery. So we can expect this to be better, of course, with the next few betas. But we can see right here the battery for the last five days. It's not been that good on my device. It was better before. But of course, we had the re-release of iOS 17 beta 3, which I installed on my device. And of course, it will just like have an impact on the battery life in the first few days. But also these days, I mainly use my device on LTE and some places that of course the coverage wasn't that good so you can expect to have like worse battery life but it's actually not the worst thing ever so you can see for today that I just did like a normal use of my device we have there exactly 25% 2 hours and 22 minutes which actually is not that bad at all but of course always with the hope that it will be way way better on the next betas now, as, as far as next betas go iOS 17 beta 4 might be released today so today will most likely be the date we get the new beta either today or tomorrow beta 4 should be released for the devs probably then followed up with the new public beta as well so i would expect apple to do that today and then another two weeks until beta 5 and from beta 5 which should be released somewhere here in the beginning of august maybe on the first or the second of august i would expect actually apple to move on then to a weekly schedule where every week we will get a new beta of iowa 17 of course until we reach september where we will get the rc and of course the public release of iowa 17. So that is it for this video guys, iOS 17 again is looking amazing, I cannot wait for this update to be released to the public, it will be really really good. Thank you guys for watching the video, leave a like if you enjoyed it, of course don't forget to subscribe for more, I'll see you on the next video.